brothers and sisters. Yes, all we are in front of God, our Father, to worship. As we are kneeling down our all the hearts and the minds and the might and the strength to the Lord our Savior. Amen. Today is especially the Children's Sunday. Yes, we have children. We are having the children as our new generation, the next hope. But we all ourselves are the children of God. So this is the Sunday that we all together worship God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us sing together 405, the hymn, no? Water Fellowship, Water Joyful Divine. Water Fellowship, Water Joy Divine, a leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is my leaning, lasting arm, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning, 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 everlasting on the arms. Oh, what sweat to work, oh, this pillowy leaning on the everlasting earth. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and cure from all alarm, leaning, 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 everlasting, leaning, um, what have I to dread, what have I to fear, leaning, I have blessed the peace with my loss of falling, on everlasting arm, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your giving this beautiful day. This is the day that you have made to make the blessed day for everyone to come to you, to worship, to celebrate the name of God, the wonderful, the holy name. The Jesus Christ has come to us to save us, to give us the peace and the joy and delight in Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank you for your giving, especially today, the Children's Sunday. We all are your children. You saved us, not by the blood, not by the flesh, but by your will, by the Holy Spirit, as you called us, as you loved us. We become the children in Christ Jesus, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your making this beautiful day. Your children, your family, belonging to the kingdom of heaven. Today we want to worship you. We want to hear your voice today. Please give your word and so that we want we have your word. And uh, we have as the good soil producing 30% and 30 times and 60 times and 100 times so that we all glorify your name and share this beautiful message to all the people. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture God now is giving us is Mark chapter 5, verses 20, 
And when Jesus has crossed over, again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell and his feet, and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come, and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And great crowd followed him and thronged about him. When there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and, uh, he, and uh, who had suffered much on the many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the report about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garment, I will be made well. And immediate, immediately the flow, the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned up about uh, in the crowd and said, Who touched my garment? And it, his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, and fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from a ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and a weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, but he put them all outside and took the children's father and mother and those who were with him, and went in where the child was. Taking her by hand, he said to her, Talita kum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. Amen. Today we have uh, two stories. But the two, two stories are interconnected. When Jesus came back from the east, of the Sea of Galilee to the west. Still he was in the seashore. The many people followed him. And there, there was a man whose name was Jairus, ruler of a synagogue, came to Jesus and kneeled down to him, to the feet of Jesus, and asked, Jesus, please come to my house and heal my daughter. She is at the point of death. The desperation of, of the father who is asking for her daughter, the only daughter, according to Matthew. He is now asking Jesus to come his house. 
And Jesus said, Okay, I will go. So he was with him to go. This is one story. But in the middle of the path he was walking, there was a woman came to him, Jesus. She heard the news that Jesus healed. So she came to Jesus and she thought to herself, if I touch her by, uh, him by garment, my disease will be healed. And she was in the discharge of the blood for 12 years. That long years, she had suffered from many physicians and she spent all the money she had, but nothing good but became worse. No hope at all. And there she found the last hope that she is coming to Jesus and touching his garment. And there Jesus healed the sick, the woman. And while she was healed, she got Jesus spoke to him. You go home, you go home in peace. And uh, you are set out from the disease, the disease. While he was speaking to the woman, there was there were some people coming from the house of the ruler, the Jairus, saying, Your daughter is dead. Don't bother the teacher to come anymore, any further. But Jesus heard that story, the speaking the man from the house to the, the, uh, the ruler of the uh, synagogue. And Jesus spoke to the man, the Jairus. Don't fear anymore and have faith. So Jesus helped the man to have the faith, not the doubt. And uh, Jesus came to the house and uh, healed and uh, uh, made a little girl who died already live again. So the two stories are interconnected this way starting from the little girl's case to who was 12 years old. Jesus was heading for the house of the Jairus, the father of the little girl. And in the middle, a woman came to Jesus who was suffering from the discharge of the blood 12 years. And she was healed by Jesus. And after healing her, Jesus came to the house of the woman, the lady, who was 12 years old. And he made a 12-year-old girl live again. So the two stories are this way interconnected. And we have one same theme we find, that it is Jesus Christ. When he met the one and the other, miracle happened. We may think that they came to Jesus instead, and they asked Jesus for favor, and finally they got what they wanted. But that is not the case. It is Jesus who came to them and who healed. And this is the first theme that we find in the two stories. The second theme, a theme is to be healed and uh, to get this miracle, we need faith, no matter it is small or not. And number three is, even though the faith is not that perfect, yes, people may not have that perfect faith at all. Jesus is the one who makes the little faith perfect and Jesus is the one who makes the faith stronger and the last point we find in the both cases is the grace of the kingdom of heaven has come to the people there so at least to the people here the the woman suffering from uh, the uh, discharge of the blood and uh, 
uh, the girl, 12 years old, who was dead one time and now live again. So they experience what is the kingdom of God. And by Jesus calling the woman, daughter, your faith has made you healed. So Jesus called the woman, daughter. So she now is recognized as a child of God in the kingdom of heaven. And also when Jesus called the little girl, Talita Kum. Talita means lamb, the lamb of God. Talita Kum means you arise. So Jesus, as the shepherd, is finding this little girl as the lamb who was one time lost and dead, but now is found and live again. So we find that both cases, they were found in the kingdom of heaven, the grace of the kingdom of heaven, and they were recognized as children of God. Today, we have Children's Sunday. Many of you have children and children's children. This time, we bless God's blessings to your children and your children's children. But on the other hand, all of you are the children of God. As this woman called by Jesus' daughter and the other young lady, girl who was called by Jesus, Talita, the Lamb of God. We all are together, the daughter, and the son, and the lamb, and the child. So this is the day we celebrate the blessings coming from above. Jesus came back from the east to the west. In the east, as we all know that, he healed one person who was possessed by unclean unclean spirit and uh, legion, many, many, a uh, uh, big number of uh, uh, the spirits. But he was healed when he was uh, shouting, not communicating, when he was hurting himself, not caring himself, when he was living in the tomb, not in the house, Jesus met him, found him, and uh, healed him and uh, let him go back home, his house, and to his own people, and uh, let him speak out what God has done to him. So he now became the witness and evangelist of God, what has done to him. And Decapolis, the many cities were uh, overwhelmed by his preaching, his delivering the good news. So Jesus now, came back to the West. And there, Jesus met many, many people waiting for Jesus. But now I see, I tell you this, this is the case, now Jesus meeting individual, one 12-year-old girl who was at the point of death. And on the way to the house, Jesus met another one, another miserable, who was suffering from discharge of blood. And she healed this one, and also, uh, uh, and Jesus healed this one, and also Jesus made the other live again. So not by the crowd, many people, but by individually, one by one, Jesus is meeting, and Jesus is healing. So I bless all of you, each one of you. Now we have Jesus Christ, meeting one by one, calling us by the name and knowing what problem we have. And Jesus is now healing and giving the life to each one of us. Amen. Now let's think about the Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, who had very high social status and who must be very rich. 
but the who had one only one daughter die and he was desperate in asking for salvation the help but no one could help him so he found Jesus and he came down came to Jesus and kneeled down to the feet of Jesus and asking Jesus please come to my house and lay your hand upon my daughter and let her come to the life here we find that wow this man is a man of faith this man deserves the grace of God but please don't misunderstand this it is not the man but Jesus who showed his compassion and care so we need to glorify Jesus not this person of his faith his faith was nothing if not Jesus found that that was nothing if not Jesus Jesus made it perfect a proverb is saying that the feeling of catching the straw catching the straw what does that mean desperation finding no hope at all so even straw catches thinking if it is any help so Jairus is, is in the status so not to be glorified by his faith but we now know need know that he is in the miserable situation having no hope at all even though he was high status in socially economically he was a wealth wealthy but nothing was his help that's why he came to Jesus the point is Jesus recognized him his desperation and his presence to Jesus and Jesus picked that up and uh, Jesus now is walking to his house together with him and there was another one another woman who was suffering from the discharge of blood unlike Jairus she was very low in the social class status woman and also a woman of discharge of blood so not only socially but also ritually she was unclean untouchable and also she lost all her money out of uh, uh, physical treatments for nothing so she became poor so she is unlike the Jairus who was a still high status social economic status she was very much untouchable and a low class but the common point is found that like the Jairus who had who is now uh, his daughter is at the point of death this woman had no hope at all people didn't give her any hope any any heal any uh, help at all and uh, she heard the news of Jesus and she came to Jesus approached even though she was not untouchable she could she was not allowed to go to the people but uh, she thought if I touch only his garment I may be healed there Jesus stopped and looked around to see her and eventually found the woman and she, uh, he sp uh, Jesus spoke to woman daughter your faith has made you well go in peace be healed of your disease as I talked to you before like the Jairus case this woman also is the status of feeling of catching the straw you know what she was not only woman but also many people already tried to touch his garment and also got healed mark chapter 6 53 to 56 says when they had crossed over they came to land of Kennesaret and uh, moored to the shore 
and they got out of the boats. The people immediately recognized him and they ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever, wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came in villages, cities, and uh, countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment and as many as touched it were made well. So this already happened. So we shall not glorify the praise, the faith of this woman. But we need to glorify and praise the name of Jesus Christ who came to this woman. What if, what if Jesus was not passing through that area so that she might come approach to Jesus? What if more fundamentally speaking, Jesus has not come from above to the, land, to, to the earth to save uh, the sick people, uh, the, the sinners. Jesus, the Son of God, and he, God himself, he came to us. So it is Jesus Christ who approached to the woman and gave her the chance to come to Jesus. So we need to glorify Jesus. But Still, she had something goodness that we need to recognize. That is, even though she was untouchable, ritually unclean, she had the faith that if I touch him, so she approached to Jesus. This little one, like a small as small as a mustard seed, this faith Jesus appreciated and used that in his cleaning. That's why, that's what is needed to her. So now we know that it is Jesus Christ who came and loved her first. And there she got a chance to love Jesus back. So this is the general rule that we found in everything in relationship with Jesus Christ. It is not us to go to Jesus. It is not us to seek Jesus first. But it is Jesus Christ who come to us and to seek us first. We were lost, but we were found. We were still suffering. We were still committing sins. But it is Jesus who came and helped us. Romans chapter 5 says, We were still sinners committing sins. We were still enemies to God. However, God showed His love and mercy through Jesus Christ. And uh, Jesus Christ came to us and crucified Himself up, upon the cross. So we were still sinners. We were still enemies to God. But Jesus came to us. 1 John chapter 4, 10 says, it is in, this, uh, in this is love, not we love God, but He loved us and sent His Son to be the uh, appropriation for our sins. It is not us, but God who loved us first. While Jesus was still speaking to the woman, people from the house of Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, came to the Jairus and spoke that your dad, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any any further? Jesus overheard that what they were speaking to the ruler of the synagogue. Think about the synagogue, uh, the ruler of the synagogue. He was heading to his house with a desperation. But uh, he now met people coming from his house and reported, Your daughter is dead. By that moment, we may guess that uh, his faith was shaking. He was at the point of uh, losing the faith. And also he was at the point of turning from the believer to the doubter. From uh, asking Jesus for help to complaining for Jesus, for the late. Lateness. Do you remember what happened to Martha and Mary, sisters of Lazarus? When Jesus appeared, they complained to Jesus, Jesus, if you came a little earlier, my brother might have not died, but you came late. 
Instead of welcoming, instead of appreciating, they complained to Jesus. They lost their faith. Now this man, Jairus, was at the point of losing the faith because he now is hearing the message from the people coming from his house. Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But you know what? Before this man, Jairus uh, responds to the, uh, the people. And before he comes back to Jesus and says something like, It is too late, Jesus. You don't have to come to my house. You go back, please. But before that, Jesus is speaking to him. Do not fear, only believe. Jesus' speaking was faster than this Jairus response. Jesus is speaking faster than his doubt. If Jesus didn't say this this time immediately, Jairus might have agreed to the people coming from his house. And he might have shouted that Jesus, it is done. You, you, there is nothing you can do. But Jesus is now helping the man not to speak out. Saying, do not fear, only believe. What does that mean? This is the time that he is, Jesus is creating the faith to the person. Do not fear, only believe. Now we have Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let us fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Let us fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Jesus is the one who creating us the faith that we didn't have before. And also Jesus is the one who is perfecting our faith that we are losing. But Jesus now he's saying, do not fear and only believe. Brothers and sisters, do you remember there was another father of a son this time who came to Jesus asking for the heal because demon possessed the son. is coming into water and fire. and So he came to Jesus and said, Jesus, please have compassion upon us, my son and I, most miserable. And if you can, please do something. By the time Jesus spoke to the man, the father, Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. All things are possible. So Jesus is now creating the faith to the person, the father. And by the time father said, Jesus, help me of my lackness of faith. I now believe in. And there, Jesus healed the son. So not only this synagogue, uh, the ruler of the synagogue, but also this another father of the son, and also all the people like Martha and Mary, and uh, all of us today, today. Jesus is now giving us the faith faster than us. Stronger than us. Overpowering over us. Jesus is now giving us the faith. And also Jesus is giving the faith to the people, number one, not to follow him anymore. Here, people in the big group, they want to see what they want. As they were sharing their interest, they make big group. But there, there is a, not possible for them to have faith. To have faith, we need to be one person, single person to meet Jesus. Remember Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night. Like that situation, when Jesus said, you must be born again. And Jesus spoke that, like uh, uh, people looked at the serpent, Upon, upon the stick, and uh, you will see the uh, Son of God uh, crucified. And this is the way God is loving. 
the world so that he sent his one and only son Jesus Christ anyone who believes in him will have eternal life not perish, perish at all so this is the time when Jesus spoke to one person so Jesus now is separating the cloud so that he makes a small group this is a spiritual challenge for the people to stop and think number two the Jairus the ruler of the synagogue he had faith that Jesus will heal and save his daughter but on the way home he was he got a challenge he got a point of losing his faith but Jesus spoke to him do not fear only believe so Jesus helped him to have the faith and also the woman who was suffering from the charge of the blood she was desperate so that she, she approached Jesus but that she now was a woman of terror and trembling as she saw what happened to her in the body here it is the, 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 the text that says she was overwhelmed by fear and trembling before she had fear and trembling about what happened to her the disease and uh, uh, the hopelessness and the people's uh, you know what uh, 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 without any compassion and the physicians inability to help her anymore but now she is in, in front of Jesus and having the fear and trembling to Jesus this is right time that uh, she is in front of Jesus the God and know herself as a sinner and Jesus the Savior by that moment the spiritual moment of fear and trembling of Jesus which is the essence of the wisdom as Proverbs chapter 1 7 says she now is receiving the salvation and also the people in the uh, the rulers of the synagogue Jesus spoke to them she is sleeping not dead at all even though they were laughing at Jesus finally finally they saw the glory of Jesus Christ as the little lady little 12 year old girl come out and they were glorifying Jesus so Jesus spoke to them she is sleeping so finally they were instructed by the wisdom and the power of Jesus Christ and also the disciples of Jesus remember when Jesus said who touched my garment he stopped and looked around what was the response of the disciples they said Jesus these many people are pushing you everyone pushing you not only one person but what Jesus was looking for was one person who was most, most miserable who, who is looking for Jesus for the healing Jesus is looking for the one but the disciples couldn't see the person but only the many people crowded point is clear they had no faith of Jesus Christ caring for the most miserable meeting one person by one each one so they were at the status of the spiritual they couldn't see the lady woman suffering from disease but finally Jesus taught them and he's, he uh, you know at the reduced the number uh, allowed to come to the house three Peter and uh, James and uh, John they were uh, three were allowed to come which means the same thing to uh, the crowd uh, separated this uh, uh, disciples also uh, limited by the numbers and they were allowed few people allowed to see and uh, what is happening by power of Jesus Christ and also the parents were taught and given the faith 
they were most miserable people losing the daughter. But Jesus allowed them to come into the specific place in the healing. Jesus separated them from other people, wailing and, uh, and uh, uh, shouting and uh, uh, weeping and uh, doubting and uh, uh, even uh, laughing at Jesus Christ. Jesus separated the parents from those people and uh, brought them into that space where Jesus is showing the miracle. So that Jesus is now giving the faith to the parents, the creation of a faith to them. And finally, it, it was the child, the most uh, wonderful beneficiary of the faith was the child. Jesus touched her hands and uh, you know what, say Talita Kum. Jesus called her as Talita, the lamb, means I have come to you as the shepherd. You have been lost, but I have found you. You, my lamb, you. Stand up. Kum. Talita kum. And also Jesus said, give her something to eat. Jesus cared for the fact that she was hungry. So she, Jesus cared her. So we now find that this 12-year-old girl might have a new life. And from that time on, she has become the witness of the resurrection by Jesus Christ. So this is the way that Jesus is giving his the faith to the people. Last Sunday, we spoke about the person possessed by the unclean and the legion. And this time we know that he was us and he was among us, the brothers and sisters will we find ourselves the same person that Jesus met? And today also we find this. We find, here, we find here this woman who had 12 years discharge of blood, suffering. And we have another young girl who had 12, who, 12 years living, but that there, stopped there. 12 years suffering of discharge of blood and 12 years of life to the death, to the point of death. By the number 12, they were very similar. But it was Jesus Christ who stopped the 12 year suffering right there as he met. And also right there at the end of the life in 12 years, Jesus gave a new life to the little girl. So this lady, woman, and this young lady, girl, if we overlapped the two figures, we find our each figure there. So this is our story. This is my story. And this is what happened to me today. This way, Jesus is giving us this message to us and say, Daughter, your faith has healed you, saved you. Go in peace. And Dalita, come. And this is the message that Jesus is giving to us, each one of us. You remember what Jesus spoke? I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, uh, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So Jesus is now calling the little girl Talita, the lamb, you stand up. So that is the way Jesus is healing, uh, uh, you know, giving her life. And to give her life, we need to remember that as the good shepherd lay his life for the sheep, here it is written, as I 
as the shepherd, I, uh, I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus laid down his life, crucified himself upon the cross. So this is the uh, point we all need that. When Jesus spoke, Talita, come. There is promise that uh, he will die upon the cross and shed his precious blood and uh, forgive all the sins of us. To make this happening, the 12 year suffering from discharge of blood. And the 12 year girl died, but living again, having the new life. To make this happening be spiritual and eternal thing, we need to know that Jesus died himself upon the cross and gave us forgiveness and gave us eternal life. This is the point. What if we find that this woman finally died, living no more, right? We don't know when, however, but she might have died. And also this 12-year little girl might have died at a certain point of her life, right? So that means it is just a temporary extension of their lives. If not, it is spiritually, it is, if not, it is eternal life giving, this is not that precious message to us. So now we need to, brothers and sisters, know this. In this teaching of Jesus Christ, in this showing the miracles, we all need to see the cross upon which Jesus died upon and crucified and gave us the blood, precious blood, forgiving all the sins. And anyone who will look at Jesus, as Jesus spoke to Nicodemus. Anyone who believes in him will have eternal life, never perished. This is the key point we need to know today in the, in the children's Sunday. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, John 5.25 says. It's now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will leave. And those who here will leave. We all are now hearing Jesus Christ the voice, loving one, calling us to the eternity. And now we will hear, no matter we are now living or dead, we all need to hear the voice of Jesus Christ when he comes second time with the trumpet of uh, uh, the, uh, the angels and the all dead people will live again. Some will go to the kingdom of heaven, and some will go to the hell. Anyway, the time will come. The dead will listen to the voice of Jesus Christ. So today, this message is our eternal message for our living eternity. Remember what happened to Ezekiel, chapter 37, when he was led by God at a certain valley, piled up the dried bones. And there God spoke that, Son of man, all those bones will live. And there he spoke to God, Oh God, you know that. And God said, Command in my name all the dried bones, listen to the word of God. You know what? The dried bones listen to the word of God. Brothers and sisters, we all know that. Even the dead bodies, the, the, uh, lady, uh, the 12 year old lady who was dead, but now she listened to the word of God, Jesus Christ, and uh, she stood up. And Lazarus, after four days of his death, when Jesus said, Lazarus, come out, he came out of the tomb. The same thing happened in the valley of the Ezekiel. When God spoke through Ezekiel, you dry the bones listen to the word of God. Then why you brothers and sisters? Do you think you are still living? And why do not why you do not listen to the word of God? If you do, no matter how desperate you are, no matter how suffering you are, you have been, you will live again. You will have the eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is Jesus Christ who has come to us to save us as he crucified himself 
and shedding that precious blood for us. So He gave us restoration. He, he gave us the uh, uh, you know what, the forgiveness and gave us the new life as He carried all the burdens, all the curses, all the deaths, all the disease upon His shoulder. And He died upon the cross. So it is Jesus Christ who come to us and show this, this mercy. And this is the, the way that He saved us. How can we not have the fear and trembling to our Lord Jesus Christ? How can we not fear and trembling in front of Jesus Christ? Who loves this much us, knowing us more than us, loving us more than us? How can we not love Him this much? Fear and trembling. Like this woman released from the disease. Brothers and sisters, this is the way that we are living the holiness. We shall be in front of God. Remember, there was a Danish philosopher and a theologian whose name was Kierkegaard, who wrote Fear and Trembling, describing about Abraham when he got a call from God, you go and sacrifice your son, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 22. There, the Kierkegaard described how fear and trembling he might have that. It is God driving Abraham to the fear and trembling. Maybe he was happy with the newborn baby Isaac. But there God is testing him whether he is really loving love God or not. So by the test, God drove him to fear and trembling. So that the, he had the three-day journey to walk to the mountain, Moriah, with his son. When his son asked him, that all we have but the, but the sacrifice. Where, where do we have? Right there, he had fear and trembling in front of God. Brothers and sisters, now it is Jesus Christ who is upon the cross, loving this much, caring, taking all our sins and burdens and the curses and the death upon his shoulder. How will we not have the fear and trembling about that? And this fear and trembling may prevent any temptations from the world to love the world more, to have a uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, desire to have uh, uh, more uh, properties and uh, monies or uh, uh, you know, a sensual desire or something. We all are stopping with that, with this fear and trembling, meeting Jesus Christ. Psalm 46, 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 46, 10 says, Be still, you guys, be still. I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. This is the way God has sent Jesus Christ, the Savior, to save us. Only the name of God is to be glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter he is a gyrus, a high status, and rich person, or the, whether the woman, uh, the most miserable, losing everything, no money, and uh, no social status. Jesus cares everyone as the same. Jesus is the middle the heart of the uh, of mind, not outside. Jesus sees nothing of us, what we have, who we are, but Jesus sees what is inside of us. Because each one of us to Jesus is the Lamb of God. So Jesus calls us the name Talita Kum. Hallelujah. Jesus does not call you like a ruler of a, a synagogue or president or owner of a company. No, Jesus called you by Talita Kum. Hallelujah. You are but the Lamb of God. If not the grace of Jesus Christ, you are dying out. No hope at all. But it is Jesus Christ visiting you, coming to you where you are lying out, lying down as the dead body. Hopelessness. But you are found by Jesus. 
And Jesus is calling you Talita Kum. And that is the way that we are saved. Today, the children's Sunday, we thank God, we praise the Lord. Oh, we are children of God. How do you know that? Because Jesus came to us and called us daughter and the Lamb. We glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for your loving and caring and you are leading us to the life. Yes, we are the woman suffering from discharge of blood, separated from the society, suffering from solitude. But it is Jesus Christ, you came to us and healed us and found the unseen faith and made us perfect in the faith. And we are the one lying out, lying down upon that bed, waiting for the death coming. But it is Jesus Christ who came to us and saved us, giving a new life. So in Jesus Christ, we have new life. We thank God. We thank God for you send us your Son, Jesus Christ, and save us. We all want to live in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Thank you. All right, this time we have a uh, time of uh, uh, returning the offering, and uh, all things come from things come from God. And now we are returning, and let us pray. Father God, thank you for your loving us, giving this beautiful time to return the offering back to you. But as we are standing up, we want to dedicate ourselves to you. We want to offer back to you our time and our thoughts and our, uh, our energy and our lives. We want to be living sacrifice going back to you. So please use us to be the instruments and witnesses of Jesus Christ. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, why don't you stand up and let us sing together the hymnal. Jesus loves, the, loves me, this I know. Okay. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to whom belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, who would I? Heaven gate to open wide, He will wash away my sin. Let little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. Though I'm very weak and near from His shining throne on I come to me where I lie. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, He will stay close beside me all the way. 
I love him and when I die, he will take me home on I. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me. One more time. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yeah, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The one suffering from the discharge of the blood and the one suffering from the coming death. But the one who met Jesus Christ, who has come to you and finally get the salvation from this time to the eternity. Amen. Hallelujah! Jesus has come to you. Amen. Hallelujah.